for them. Then the Bray TV, got the gaffer here, Michael Kennedy. Michael's been a few weeks since we last got up, and um, we've done obviously the tough run of games. Urban Meadow, uh, Clyde Bank, Pollock, and then Hurlford on Friday night there. I'm obviously facing Cumberland on Saturday. Two points for a possible 12 so far um, after a blistered in Saturday. Just give us your thoughts so far. Uh, obviously, I think when you look at it in isolation in terms of like, taking two points at a possible 12, I think the reality is with the standard play we've got in the squad we've got, I don't think it's good enough to be honest with you. I know there's, listen, there's maybe some mitigating circumstances uh, behind the scenes, obviously. Up until we played Coleran, which I thought we played really well for, for the second 45 minutes, and unfortunately not to take it into the game, and maybe because we're only one. Obviously, with a two week break down and shut down because we had nine players out with COVID. Uh, and since then we've come back for that and I, even though we played Largs after that and we won 2-0 I, I don't think that was a particularly strong performance here and I think we've just struggled to get a bit of momentum since then yeah, there's obviously been other circumstances an injury here or there and we've not really had a, any opportunity to get a real structured team in place but we've got, still got a strong squad and the reality is I would expect more points uh, uh, than 2 out of 12 to be honest with you we all know it's a, it's a tough league, you mentioned it many times before, and it's a battle for three points every week. How, how's both yourself and, and the players finding this league in general? Fine, I, 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 for me it's not what I expected it to be, not, not more than I expected it to be. I think the problem is when you, obviously when we've got the momentum behind the club that we've, we've got off the park and obviously the infrastructure we've put in place and the players we've brought in and everybody's talking about is has been up there as one of the favourites to go and win the league, then the reality is that then brings high expectations. But I was always very aware that we were going to be one of the toughest leagues in the country. I think I said that, I've said that on many occasions. And I think there's also needs to be a sense of reality as well. It's the first time the club's been in the Premier Division. It's for a lot of these boys, the first time they've played at this level and there's, there's a level of adjustment that needs to be taken. Uh, and they're also, I, I never expected this to just come in this league and win every other week. I know people maybe f f externally think that's what we thought. I think you obviously speak to me on a regular basis and I've always said it'll be a real challenge in the Mandan League. If we thought it was going to be easy, that five-year plan we had would be a two-year plan because we just won the league this year and we won the long league next year with League Two. The reason it was a five-year plan is because we knew along the way there would be challenges, there would be hurdles and we knew it would be difficult. So I, I don't, nobody's panicking internally anyway. Uh, there's still a lot of work to be done. Uh, I think over the next coming weeks, hopefully we start to get one or two players back. We've obviously got some real long-term injuries. Obviously, Cammy, their centre-half, Wally Robertson, their centre-mid who will be long-term, I think. Hopefully, hopefully Craig Moore's back next week. Obviously, Kirk Kane got to come back last week. So things are starting to improve slightly, but we've still got some injuries to get. I don't, I hopefully, in the next coming weeks, that we'll start to get a bit stronger and then hopefully we start to pick up more points. I'm sure you, and obviously, you're saying the mention of well, sorry, the Robertson, so obviously, sad to hear them really getting COVID and then obviously getting further kind of health issues. Uh, are you planning to bring in what, what is a Ryan Jack and his Mary Sawyer or something like that? <laughs> What's the plan for that? I, 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 think I think they're probably actively looking. I think the problem you've got is a real difficult time of the year to, to, to bring players in because obviously in League 1 and 2 the transfer window shut so they, they're finding it hard, they'll find it hard to replace somebody. And the reality is at our level nobody really wants to lose good players, important players at this time of the year so there's no point in bringing people in for the sake of it. But I think we'd definitely look to try and bring in one or two possibly could because obviously we've got two or three long term injuries and then we've still got some boys struggling to come back for injured important players but aye listen we're always speaking to people but we'll just need to wait, see what happens here the next couple of weeks and uh, obviously the last, the kind of last four games has that really been has injuries been, been the cause because there's obviously I don't think we've had the same start in 11 the last probably three four games um, has that been the kind of main reason or has it just been the results and try to change the system or? I, I, I think there's a couple of things I think one of the things is when you look at the games in isolation, I think when you look at them collectively, you say it's probably not enough. I think when you look at the games in isolation, you look at Evan Meadow, we're 1 0 up, Fergie misses an absolute sitter at 2 0. At 1 0, sorry, you score, go 2 0 up, you probably go and win that game comfortably, and you disrespect Evan Meadow. Then we do well to get back in after them going 2 1 in front. I look at Clyde Bank for f 55, 60 minutes, we're really dominant. I think going up to the 8th minute, I don't think again, they foreseen Clyde Bank getting back in the game, they get a fortunate break off a free kick after the one they get a penalty in the last minute with, with a handball in the box so, so I was I, I think we deserve to take three points out of that. I think Paul will know when they're good enough apart from the first 10-15 minutes and I don't think in Friday night and listen things went against us in Friday night we got a penalty against us it was never a penalty it was actually outside the box and I think their third goals 
contentious to say the least. But we still got a man sent off when we're two each. Uh, Fury and self doing, then another man sent off. So there's, there's things that we're finding in control that we need to do better. But uh, there's, there's aspects that where, as I say, you look at some of the games individually, there's aspects you're, you could be happy with, but collectively it doesn't matter. It's two points out of 12, and the reality is, in my opinion, we were trying to take the club, but we're trying to achieve that isn't good enough. Obviously, they, they took a 12 points, at, at least a six place at present. Obviously, if you take that game in hand, the league giant style, but nine of obviously, if you take that game in hand, one way to go yet, but is there any cause for concern that given the fact that they're Talbot and they've got a, a, a hefty lead uh, and also how does that fit in with where your plans where you thought you would be at this kind of point in the season, given that I know we're only sort of 12? I, I, I think I, I think I've said that I've obviously been in a couple of podcasts the last couple of weeks, which isn't like me. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and I think I've said that I think the best thing to do is to analyse the season you get to 18 games. Yeah. And I think once we get to 18 games, then we can take a, a stock of where we're at. In relation to Auchinleck being nine points clear, we're not game in hand. I also said in the summer, I think the downfall of clubs at his level is they're so fixated on the open leg day. And so and you concentrate so much on trying to catch them when the reality is what the last four weeks have shown us is this looks a lot stronger than out with Auckland Leck. And if you come so focused on trying to beat them, trying to catch them, the reality is you need to pick points up elsewhere. And and we've not done that. Uh, so I think first and foremost it's about just going back to a Saturday, winning games a, a football, getting three points on the board, building a bit of momentum. The once we get to 18 games, we'll take stock of where we're at. But th there's other quality in this league outside. Listen, I don't think anybody denies their qualities, the success they've had, the continuity they've had. That group of players have been so successful at this level for probably nigh on 10 years. You can put a price on that as well, that continuity and the experience. But we need to just take each week as it comes, concentrate on each game as it comes and take each team as it comes and then we'll see where we, are. we get to 18 games and we can take stock of where the season's at. But if you're asking me, would I expect to be closer to the top of the league with this many games in? We've got an absolute shadow of doubt where that's all can like one line clear or Pollock or go one in, no matter who it would be, I would expect to be at least closer to it. And obviously moving away from league duty, we've got uh, Keith uh, a week Saturday, Scottish Cup, first in history of both as a club looking to take a, a good support away with, with us and hopefully it's a, a momentous occasion. Uh, do you know much about them when you had them watched at all? Aye, so, aye, so we've had them watched, so we've got a report on them, so we always try and do things as professional as we can, so we know a fair bit about them. Uh, there'll be a challenge going up there as there always is. I think the intention is we've got them stay next Friday night and he's the best chance at recovery for the Saturday. Uh, but aye, it'll be a difficult game going up to the Highlands. Uh, I'm sure they'll be strong, robust. Uh, the loads of desire and it'll be a challenge for us but I think fundamentally it's a momentous day for the club but, but also the town as well I think probably the last few years they think that the club would be in the Senior Scottish Cup and I think what's important about that is how we've got there it's no doing to maybe going go on and earning that through playing it's come down to the hard work of the community and the committee to put the infrastructure in place to do that to get the club to a level where it's got its licence where you earn the right every year to play in the Senior Scottish Cup I think for the, the, the job the committee's done and obviously the president John in the last sort of three or four years to get the club into a position where that we're recognised at that level of football now where we get automatic entry into the Senior Scottish Cup is significant in the, the work that's been done after the park. Uh, good. Uh, finally, Vic, there's obviously been a few moans and groans over the last uh, month or so with various fans in various different areas uh, following results and performances which are messaged them at this time. You've got to take the bad times with the good times, unfortunately. Yeah. That's just football. Listen, I think, as I say, when you when you, the investment happens in the park and the infrastructure and everybody's talking about it and you look at the players we brought in and stuff like that, then there's an ex expectations grow considerably quickly. Listen, I can remember two years ago when I first came here, the plan was we must get in the Premiership, we must get in the Premiership, we get in the Premiership, now the reason, the re we must win the Premiership. All right? So, but... It's about just staying strong, staying united. And as I said, we've got a journey in front of us, we've got a plan in front of us. That plan will be better executed if we all stay together. That doesn't stop people from moaning, they've got a right to moan because ultimately they care and they're passionate about the club. But I'm confident with the players we've got, and there's been a lot of things that went against us, but I'm confident the group we've got, they're good, honest, hard-working boys. And I'm sure as we progress early the next few months and next few years, we'll bring massive success to the club. Hopefully that's what everybody's working towards. But there's at least a degree of patience on everybody's part. Uh, 
I know it's easy for me to say that when I'm the manager, but as I say, I, I, I know this will be a real difficult challenge in the next few years. As I said, this league's one of the most demanding leagues in the country, and we need to make sure that we understand that as we move forward. But you need to hope and you need to have dreams. That's ultimately what football's all about. My job and the players' job is that we need to try and bring some of that to reality, and I'm sure they will work harder than us to make sure that happens. Yeah, I certainly agree with that. Again, thanks for your time, mate. Best of luck for coming up Saturday. Anytime, mate.